Hey guys, I'm Mary, and today we're going to be up potting my yarrow. Uh, but first, we're going to take a moment and assess what's going on on my kitchen counter because this is just planting on a different scale that, like, I'm just, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot's going on, I feel like. So this is my kitchen counter. So silly. So we're up potting, which I just finally edited the Yarrow video where I said, oh, I won't have to re up pot these. And look at that. Look at those. Oh, look at those crazy roots. Oh my goodness. I thought. I thought I was doing smart things. I, I should have put them in cups just to begin with. And I think that onions got into this. I don't know. Trying to make you see things. Yeah, that smells like onions. <laughs> so, not really sure how that happened, but it happened. Um, this week, I feel like maybe I should be doing it up here, but that window is so bright. Oh, the struggles. So maybe this is a better angle. We're going to see. Uh, <laughs> it was not, Yara was not one of the things I was planning on potting up by any means. I have potted up. My plan this week was that I needed to pot up the Canterbury Bells and the Mullen. Those were the things that I needed to pot up. And this week is the big seed week, so like that was my plan. At the beginning of this week, I was going to get the Mullen done, the Canterbury Bells done, and then I was going to get ready to do all the squash and pumpkins that need to be done. Um... So lots of things going on and then I was looking at my yarrow and was like oh my goodness I need to up pot this too I wasn't ready for that okay so here we are <laughs> panic potting I guess I don't know but it gave me a second to reanalyze instead of keeping everything up here I got two tables beside me, beside me and behind me. And I have, I did go out and buy roasting pans cause that's where we're at. I've pushed the little, these humps in. So now it's like that, but now it's created like a kind of a shallow hole. What do I want to say? Uh, Not a hole, uh, a ditch. That's not the right word. You know what I'm saying. So like water might pool up in that, but I'd rather that than them sitting unbalanced. Bought those yesterday and then I had to go back out and buy some smaller ones because I've realized I could fit a big one and a small one on a shelf. So that's something that I can do where I'm not just taking up a bunch of space <laughs> with just one pan. Uh, so to prep for this week, I had gone out and bought three bags of dirt. The cubic I believe this is a cubic one cubic foot of potting soil, but I bought three of them thinking that should be enough. Silly me. Um, but right now is not a good time to try to figure out how to make dirt. <laughs> I've got too many other things going on. Um, the things I did plant in 
with that dirt seem the eggplant and pepper. I can see some new growth, but it's almost like I stunted them doing that. So maybe they just don't like to be transplanted. Hard telling how I messed it up. <laughs> or if it's just my dirt that they don't like. But also, you should probably get used to it because you're going to go live in it. <laughs> or maybe someone else's dirt. That's an option also. So I had bought those three bags of dirt. And then thought that was enough. Didn't really put into account um, that I was going to be up potting also. So it might have been enough dirt for the big seed start that I'm doing later this week. Tomorrow. <laughs> um, But it was, it was not, um, that's, that's a lot of roots, my goodness. So silly. I had spent about an hour or two counting how many plants I was starting this weekend and getting pots and drip trays all set up for that. Um, this, like how bright the green is on camera just makes me so happy. <laughs> um, so I had gotten that stuff all set up and tried to see where I was at with lights because I knew I was probably going to order another set of lights but I didn't know at what point and well this is the point <laughs> so I spent time doing that and writing up all the labels so that's even everything's ready to go so I actually hadn't looked at any of the roots on these things I had just looked at how compacted everything was looking and I was like wow I really need to be better with these so I'm surprised to see how many roots are actually hanging out of these containers. So I've placed an Amazon order to get lights in, which it looks like I'll be, like I'm hoping to get started putting soil in the pots I've got ready so I can just make it a real quick smooth like kind of how today is this is quick and smooth and ready to go it looks like I'll get my lights in on Saturday so a couple days behind schedule but oh it should be fine because that room is hot as it is so a lot of seeds don't need light for germination I don't know if these seeds are those seeds but probably gonna think that it is. I did take all of these cups and put, oh you probably can't see that, there's a hole right there. Oh yeah you can kind of see that, yeah I put a hole in all these cups with a drill which I just like left them in a stack and then uh, you just drilled a big bunch of them at a time. And that was super helpful. However, it does leave like these little plastic chunks either in the cups or everywhere. <laughs> so that is something that we should, if you do this, you're going to have to empty all your cups of these like, oh, well, I'm sure, you, oh, these little teeny tiny. That thing that just dropped off my hand, these little plastic cutouts everywhere. So, it was a process to get this all ready. I don't have labels made yet for these. 
but I think I might do the thing where I just put a label in one, like, pan to be like, this is what this whole pan is. If I need to make more labels throughout the time, I will when it gets to that time, you know? It is, so it's March 21st. Oh, I got dirt on my face. It's March 21st. Uh, in two weeks, I can start direct sowing seeds in the garden. I'm not ready for that. Are you ready for that? Um, but also, I feel like I just keep talking to myself, and I should probably actually make more people know about me doing YouTube other than... Like, my few friends that I was like, hey, I did this thing. Don't make fun of me. I wouldn't make fun of me. The confidence is there, right? <laughs> Which maybe people will be interested, maybe people won't. I don't know. Oh, I'm breaking things. Oh, no. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. I didn't break things. Not too much, at least. Um, so, I've got, finally got to my two, I say it's my more confident videos. So those two finally got uploaded so I can be like, hey, I did a thing. Look, another onion. Yeah, another onion. I don't know how onions get. Maybe I was super sloppy when I did this. I don't think I was, but... Hard telling. Um, so, since I have those first two up, or like... I have one up and that will be... The other one is scheduled to go up so that's into that's a what nice little feature of the YouTube thing um, so that will go up tomorrow to where I'm like oh well, maybe this weekend I should say something on Facebook and be like hey everyone I did stuff you don't have to watch it, though. <laughs> um, but also, what's the point of doing this if no one's going to watch it? Other than it will help me in future years see when I started things or what have you. You know, I don't know. Goals. I did. So... One of the videos I just got done editing was the Yarrow. To where I didn't want to take responsibility and tell you. I In the video I said, hey, Yarrow has medicinal factors, Google it. Because <laughs> um, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you what to do with plants. Like, smell it, eat it, grow it. <laughs> if it's a vegetable flower, you know, what have you. Uh, medicinal things, like, that's not a strong suit of mine. These are things I want to learn, but also I'm not there. And so maybe when the time comes, I might learn things, but also am I going to share that on? I don't, you know. Mm. So, overall, I'm not a doctor. Don't Trust me, other than on how to grow things. <laughs> but I'm not a doctor, I don't know. Talk to your doctor, your herbalist. Do your own research. Don't take anything I say as 100% true, facts. Uh, right? Okay, great. I think I gave that warning. So I did some Googling to try to offer 
some type of advice about Yarrow. Uh, just so that's more helpful than being like, I don't know, go, go Google it. Because, like, also, I want to learn these things. So if I Google it and get ready for a video, then I'm also learning now instead of panicking come fall or whenever it's time to harvest and go, oh, no, I'm supposed to know all this stuff? Crap. <laughs> so all that to say, I watched a couple YouTube videos. Oh did some googling i have like medicinal herb books uh i do wild foraging wild edibles foraging um i've made dandelion lotion oil made a candy out of it that wasn't great too big of a candy and that's why it wasn't great because it was like a whole dollop of it um so some notes Seems like a good spot to put it. Um, maybe I should put it closer. There we go. Um, so if you do foraging for yarrow, uh, it does have the poisonous look-alike. That's hemlock. So caution. Uh, always make sure you cross-reference when you go out foraging and you are 100% certain that you know what you're getting and aren't just like, yeah, this probably is roughly right because, like, poisonous poisonous hemlock, that's not, that's not playing games, okay? Like, don't, don't be silly now. Um, I came across one lady. Her name was, her YouTube name is Herbs with Rosalie. R-O-S-A-L-E-E. -L -E -E. And she seems like she has lots of knowledge on this stuff. So, I would definitely suggest to go to her channel and check her out. Uh, I'm definitely going to be referencing her more in the future. Just for my own personal knowledge. Maybe not on here, but she offered... Oh, what is... She had a lot of good knowledge um, and had like scientific explanations on stuff. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, I'm none of these things. I am a gardener who likes plants and would like to use plants. Okay, so let's remember this. That's vital information. Oh, look at how cute that little guy looks. <laughs> so, vital information there. Um, so, yarrow can be used in a couple different ways. One, it's good to stop bleeding, and it's also good to promote blood flow. So, I don't know how the plant knows which one is the right way to do what, um, but you know, nature, God, doing the things, how great. Um, so it's, I guess it was used back on battlefields and stuff when someone would get a minor cut or scrape or cut or scrape. Um, they would put, they would take yarrow leaves and just crumple them up and then like put it in the cup cut and it helps stop the bleeding so that's interesting um it was said that you can use you can make a poultice out of it um again remember where you're getting this information do your own research uh, but you can use the dried or fresh leaves to do that where you just crumple the leaves and put it. So either you could store some for future cuts or just go get it fresh out of your yard. 
or the woods, wherever you're getting your yarrow from. Um, and then it's microbacterial, microbial, microbial, micro. Wow, I'm overthinking the word. Microbri <laughs> Microbi beer. <laughs> so whatever the word is that I'm trying to say, it uh clears infection or detects infection. Microbial? No. Nope. I don't know how to say the word. Maybe you can hear the word I'm trying to say and you can be like, I know. I know what she's trying to talk about. Cause I'd Again, not a scientist. <laughs> um, and then uh, they said it's good for UTIs and urinary uh, health. Urinary tract health. Um, apparently, apparently you can eat this also. Uh, you can eat it fresh. Um, but they said to use it sparsely or like don't ingest a lot because it's very bitter. Um, and people would use it as spices because of the bitterness. Um, one guy I think I watched said he puts it on his eggs, which that's interesting. I don't try to put, I put cheese on my eggs, so can't relate to bitter eggs, but it's what makes the world go round. Um, and then, so it's used more like a seasoning, not like a salad. So I feel like you put it in your sap. Do your own research. <laughs> not confident in this. Maybe, like, in the fall, after I do some things with it, I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did the thing. Try this. This is good. But, again, still not a doctor, so. Um, and then, so it helps with circulation because it can promote blood flow, like we talked about earlier. Um, it promotes sweating, which apparently helps skin health. I guess that makes sense. I don't. I feel like most of us are like, oh, I need that, uh, like, I need deodorant to stop the sweating. So it's interesting, like, one benefit is it promotes sweating. So that's, that's interesting. Um, and then, so since it helps, uh, with circulation, it, can help move stagnant blood throughout the body where like bruises or varicose veins. And then I got that from the herbs with Rosalie. Again, super interesting lady, super knowledgeable. And then um, it can also help with colds and she said that you can use it as a gargle a tea a syrup a tea or a syrup i think she said another way but i didn't jot that down or yeah um she said it's also good for uh pms cramps so that's information there um she did mention something about cancer not that it helps but there's studies being done and go to her channel if you want more information on that because I don't she said science stuff and I can't say that science stuff back to you so and then uh, it's suggested that pregnant women not use this potentially not safe I don't that was just like kind of the Google search where it was like, this isn't a, the best idea. 
another onion. So interesting. Oh, and another onion. Yeah, so interesting. <laughs> um, so, and then with any wild edible, if you're just foraging for this out in the world, um, it's definitely, um, you gotta make sure you're getting the right plant. You are supposed to take time, like adjusting your body to it and like don't try a bunch of new uh, wild edibles all at once because if you do have a reaction, look at all those. Wow, that's, oh yeah, look at all that. That's crazy. Um, if you do have a reaction, you want to only be like, I'm trying one new wild edible and not be like, oh shoot, I started five different things or even two different things and be like, well, I have no idea. I just found some stuff in the woods and started eating it. Like that's not, it's not suggested. It's not a good idea, you know? So there's that information. Um, always make sure you're cross-referencing it. Uh, if you can take an educated person with you that has years of experience of going out and doing this and you have different books and like I know there's apps where it's like a plant ID on your phone. Um, those can be helpful. I think like Google Lens can help sometimes. Yikes. Um, with some plant identifying. And then... Yeah, just be use common sense precautions when going out and searching for wild edibles. Don't eat the first berry you find. That's crazy, okay? <laughs> um, I've been doing wild edibles for since I got out of high school, which was over 10 years ago. <laughs> And I can tell you a lot of plants that you cannot eat. And I, I can't tell you very many plants that you can eat. Which knowing that information is just as important as knowing what foods are available. So keep that in mind. Don't get disappointed anytime you come across the berry and are like, oh, this one's poisonous also? Yeah. But now you know that that one's poisonous and you're not, you're not going to make a silly decision and eat it and die, okay? Or unalive yourself, okay? Like, end up in a hospital. It's good to know what's poisonous and what's not poisonous. So there's that lecture <laughs> safety first guys eat things in front of a buddy I've done that I've taken what I thought was grapes to a friend's house and brought she didn't know I was doing this I just walked in with like a Walmart bag of like hey I'm gonna eat this berry I'm pretty sure it's great but I don't know we about to find out What's happening? Yeah, so if I end up at the hospital or you need to take me to the hospital in half an hour, like, here's the, like, plant leaves, here's some more berries, and here's, like, a, the grapes grow on a vine, so here's part of the vine. What are you doing? Why did you? She was not very happy. I was fine. Either it was a grape or I didn't poison myself enough. Pretty sure it was a grape, so it's fine. But I like to try things with people around because even if it says like, um, it's one hundred percent safe for you to eat. Like strawberries are one hundred percent safe for you to eat. However, some people are just allergic to strawberries, so like just because it's safe. Still doesn't mean it's safe for you. Um, which that's kind of held me off from doing very many like wild edible 
mm, wild, like, uh, natural remedies. Because, like, talking about just rubbing yarrow into a cup. I don't know. That seems, I would trust antibiotic. Oh, give me an antibiotic cream. I'll rub that lather in it. I'll take a bath in that. That's fine. You want me to put something in an open wound to plant? I don't know about that. I don't know if I trust that. So these are just my worries and concerns. <laughs> so I've officially dropped a cup straight off my counter, off the bar stool and onto the floor to where I'm kind of trapped in at this current location. So that's something. Also, I've gotten this whole tray empty. So that's exciting. And I can start, oh yikes, doing that. They did talk about how yarrow has like a unique smell. You can smell the smell off its leaves. To where like, here's a big plant that has lots of options and it smells I can smell it. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> but I guess that's the smell of yarrow, so. Smell the plants that smell like yarrow, okay? That's, that's how you're gonna be able to do the things with the stuff. Um, I did also have a casualty where I just completely yanked the roots off of this. So. Um, so this past weekend, me and a friend went to the grapevine weaving class, I think I've talked about, and we, we, we weaved a couple of wreaths, say that ten times fast, um, <clears throat> which that was cool, it was the first time I've ever worked with dried flowers and I'm just not a gentle person so I don't know if I ever want to work with dried flowers again <laughs> pretty dried flowers are pretty but I don't know if I'm just like a ogre or what but I was breaking things left and right and that was not the best of times uh, and then we went and picked up chickens. Well, my baby chicks. So that's exciting. I have 15 unsexed baby chicks. And yay. <laughs> They're cute and adorable. Uh, the lady I got them from has kids. So like the kids have definitely spent a lot of time uh, playing with them. I mean, they freak out at first because you're a giant. Um, but I, like, they'll just come and eat right out of your hand. It's precious. Feel like a Disney princess. <laughs> Get some bell action going on, you know? So that's sweet. Uh, and then, oops, all the roots, all the roots. Um, I was able, oh, you can kind of see the mess behind me. Cool. The camera has fallen and been repositioned a couple of times, so I didn't check to see what was going on behind me. But I got two more, well, a few more syrups done today. And then we'll just hide all those dishes back there again. Um... So that's exciting. Now I'm down to seven more that I need to do. And this week the weather seems to be lovely. So I might, might just be able to hit that quota. Maybe. <laughs> um, we'll see. But it was interesting Saturday when we went to the wreath making class uh it was definitely 
colder than what, like, last time I checked temperature, it was supposed to be, like, 30s, maybe 40s even. Exciting things. And then it was day of, and it was, like, zero, negative two. Oh, cool. Indiana, that was super mature. Luckily, she was willing to drive because I ain't got heat. <laughs> but it works at, like, 30s and 40s, so it, it kind of has heat. It's fine. Um, but not fine enough in that condition. Um, so she was kind enough to drive for us. And then uh, she... And then it was, like, it was calling for some flurries, and we went an hour south and, like, an hour east. Um... To where, like, it was white out at different parts. And that was just, it was a weird weather day for sure. Um, but this week it's supposed to be beautiful. And uh, <clears throat> I emptied all the buckets. Today's what, Tuesday? I emptied all the buckets out in the woods Sunday. And I'm already almost at half of a cooler, which is what I keep things in. Um, today, so hopefully things keep going that way, and it'll be it'll be good stuff, you know. Okay, so we are in the home stretch. I'm down to the, just the last seven plants. I feel like that went quicker than what I had imagined. <laughs> um, so I had some issues with one of my videos, the audio kept coming out, and I totally talked about succession sewing, so that was pretty disappointing that that all cut out. For people that are interested, you know, I don't know, but I wanted to just touch base on that real quick and be like, so when you know your first frost date and your last frost date, you put those dates in Google, it tells you, you know, you can Google like how many days are in between these two days and it will um, tell you that amount of days, which mother nature is mother nature. So it's hard to tell if those are the correct ones, but you can basically ballpark your, when you can plant things. And then knowing how long your growing season is, you can then determine what plants you can grow like I don't know if I was able to keep it in there but loofahs take like 150 days to grow if you have only a 120 day growing season that's when you would have to start it in your house at least 30 days ahead of time that doesn't seem correct well I'm making up numbers right so it, yeah hear what I'm saying <laughs> Don't take that factual. I don't have that information in front of me. Um, and then if you, a lot of root uh, crops like carrots, radishes, beets, kohlrabi, onions. Onions might be questionable. I would double check that one. Um, but the carrots, beets, radishes, uh, those all or short days, like maybe 50 days, 30 days, 60 days. So that's when you can succession sow. There's a bunch of other things other than just roots, but if you have, if you know you have 120 days and let's say beets take 30 days, then you can do like three rounds roughly of those. And those are cold hardy, so that also gives you an extended growing period also. Um, so if that helps, there's that information that I felt like it took me a second to fully understand, like, what's happening with the succession sowing, and this just seems like I don't understand, but if you plant a carrot seed, you're getting a carrot, and if you have a big family or just love carrots, you're going to you're going to want to plant more than just that one seed, right? <laughs> Probably more than that one seed that multiple times. Um, so there's that. Um, and then I feel like there was one last thing I wanted to tell you guys about. 
this weekend I get to go to the next beekeeping course, which will have more about like what to look for, how to install a nuke, a nucleus, um, or yeah, how to install that, and then also. Like what your first, what you should be looking for to see that you're getting a active colony and that things are doing good instead of failing. So, or they're not getting ready to swarm also. So these are all things that are going on this weekend. Um, I had to make just a couple more cups to finish this up. But I think we are done now. Um, I will look more into doing how to make dirt in, from your backyard. Just right now is not. I, I ain't got time for that. Um, luckily, financially, I can go out and buy dirt. Uh, I just don't want to. I would rather it's outside. It's free. Ah, um, also right now is the time that everyone should be doing, like, yard work and garden cleanup and getting things ready for in two weeks to direct sow. So, that's something. If you're not doing it, you probably should, but this video is going to be uploaded probably in May, so. Eventually. <laughs> people might see it if I tell people about it. But so I'll show you what all is up. Look at how fun that is. But I'll. So here is all of the yarrow that got potted up today. Um, also, these are the. Uh, I've told you guys about how you can get free frosting buckets. So. The store I went to had four, so that was pretty exciting. And then I also noted that these are my buttercup squash. And, like, they're doing... These are baby leaves that are just slowly wilting off. They're doing well. Um, however, can you see that? That's a little flower blossom you want to just wipe that away. I know some people, oh look, there's another flower ball, awesome. The plant does not need to focus on, oh wow, look, there's a cluster right there, which that's a leaf, so we leave the leaf because the leaves are important. However, that's a flower, oh, you can't see, sorry. That's a flower blossom. And that's a flower blossom. The plant does not need to focus on producing fruit right now. It needs to focus on continuing to grow. So, if it's starting to put energy into um, fruiting right now, that's it's it's gonna stunt its growth. And you know, we didn't put in all this work for. It to start trying to bloom currently um, so I just happened to notice that I need to go check the other ones um, but yeah that's Tess and then hi Tess here's the giant mess I've made on the floor the dogs walk through it I walk through it it's just the sheer chaos of mess. Also, since I talked about the baby chicks, here's a little clip of them being all cute and adorable. <laughs> so they were all just running around and stuff, and now they've stopped. Um, which, I only got them Saturday. I only got them Saturday, but... With 15 of them, they pooped frequently, 
so. <laughs> um, I've named a couple of them. This guy's just chilling on my hand. So, so yeah, a little bit of some babies and such, baby chickens and such. So thanks for going on the journey with me.